go fly a kite. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, one of the most favorite things I could do for a hobby or a pastime was flying a kite. When I started out, they looked like diamonds in the sky, and then later they evolved into things that looked like bats or birds, and they went up more easily, and it was great fun. I hardly know whether or not kids even fly kites anymore, but for me, for about 99 cents, that was the most fun I could have in an afternoon. I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight TV, we're diving into a nostalgic journey back to the simplicity and joy of childhood with Shelba Meek. She is the author behind an enchanting story. It is called Floyd and His Kite. This heartwarming tale rekindles the magic of old-time toys and the unique adventures they bring, highlighting the irreplaceable bond between a child and adult in the quest for fun. Join us right now as we explore how Shelba brings to life the essence of play and imagination in a world dominated by digital entertainment. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank our team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Shelba, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Good morning. Good, good morning. Good to see you too. Great to see you. Flying a kite, just as I mentioned in my opening monologue, is one of the most fun things a child can do. And it's a simple joy. I mean, I think that's what the essence of your book is all about. The simple joys of basic toys, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, very much so. Tell us a little I bit have... about you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go I say, tell us a little bit about your inspiration for Floyd and his kite. That is different from what you would expect. Um, I, I have to buy things for my grandson and mail them to Arizona because I don't live there. Mm -hmm. And I wanted something unique. And it kept coming to me, buy him a kite, buy him a kite. And I thought, he won't even know what a kite is. Why would you want to do that? And I kept, it just kept coming to me. And finally, knowing how much he loved the lizards out in Arizona and all that stuff, I thought, and he loved seeing things flying in the air. And I thought, well, okay, I'll buy him a kite. Then I'll get a little storybook to go with it. But that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. I could not find a single storybook. My daughter said, whatever you do, don't find me any kind of treasury book or big book with lots of stories because he wants me to read all of them at one time. <laughs> so I could not find a single identified book anywhere. And mm -hmm. out of disgust, because I spent all this time on the Internet and everything that I just I walked out of one place and said, you know what? I'll just write it myself. And I said it out loud. I didn't know the bookstore owner was behind me. And they said, if you do, please bring it back. We'd love to have it. And I thought that was a stupid thing to say because I've never written a book. Hmm. I've never published anything. I have no idea how it works. But uh, that was in the plan that a year or so I did write it in the middle of the night, a few months later. And then a year later, it uh, kept coming to me advertisements have you written a book on my emails when I'm doing my work and I it was the same company over and over and I just kept deleting them because I don't have time to worry about that stuff but eventually I did answer a call from them and that's how it all came together well that's wonderful necessity is the mother of invention as they say and uh, you needed this unique gift for your grandson so you created it and tell us a little bit about the story of Floyd and his kite. Well, it, he wouldn't know what it is. He was in love with trucks. That's all. Ever from the time he was able to walk, he wanted to play with big trucks. He knew the names of all of them. That was all he cared about. But um, something was very strong with me that I should get him a kite. So that's what I did. And so that took a whole new outlook on everything for him. And uh, I wanted to buy him something special, something. And I have, over the years, bought him the really old time toys, like a book, uh, a ball and a cup on a string that you would get in. And my, his father got into it. He goes, oh, I used to do that all the time. And he says, I was very good at it. So they, we got into competition. 
So there was a, a children's store where they carried some of these old things. And that's what I would get for him was different things like that. So I guess the kite really did fit in with all of the hands-on stuff that I was giving him for different times of, you know, when I go out to visit and stuff. So Floyd is actually the name of your grandson also. Yes. When I first was going to write the book, I was going to have it a boy in his kite. And I thought, well, the only reason I wanted to write this, have this book was for Floyd. So I thought, right. well, I'll name Floyd. There he goes. It's a family name. My daughter wanted him to follow down in the family with that name. Well, wonderful. Well, it's a distinctive name. You don't hear it much anymore. And uh, so it's also distinctive for your book. So you told us a story about your grandson and his kite. Tell us a story a little bit about the book, Floyd and His Kite. Well, Floyd and His Kite is about a little boy who gets that, that present and has no idea what it is. And the fact is he needs help. And that's when the parents, the father comes in. And the father is going to teach him and help him to learn to enjoy that toy. So there's a close family tie there compared to computer games. And also that he is um, with his father, which he wants to be. So those things brought joy to him, no matter what, when he can do something with his dad. Yeah. So that was the story goes through that. And that um, they do have the adventure of going and actually flying the kite. And the joy that he receives from that is what he carries when he goes to bed and to sleep at night, dreaming of another time when he can do it again. It's wonderful. It's a simple story. It's a beautiful story. And it's a true story. You know, if you have a kite and you're a little boy, you need somebody to show you how to fly it. You need sometimes somebody to show you how to put it together. At times you might even make a kite out of like, you know, boards and newspaper and getting right. the string and not getting entangled up and being careful of power lines and bringing it to the park or the beach. So with this simple toy, there's so much joy and so much connection, as you mentioned, that we don't have when the kids today are like this, right? Right. Yeah. So I think it's yeah, a great reminder to Floyd, your grandson, and to all the other grandsons and granddaughters and children out there that there are simple toys that are just pure pleasure, like a yo-yo, for example. Yes, right? I bought him a yo-yo. He actually took yo-yo classes. So Wonderful. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, and my of the kite that I bought, they had other people ask if they could borrow it so they could do it with their kids. So that's a good thing. That's that is really a good, good thing. That is a good thing. So when he took the yo-yo classes, did he learn some of those things like walk the dog and around the mm -hmm. world and cats in the cradle and all of yeah. that stuff? Yeah, I had already bought him one, but they offered it at school, at his elementary school. Great. And so I said, well, you've got to show me all these things you've learned. And so when I went to visit, he was showing me all these things. He thinks it's so cool. It is cool. And it's a lot of fun. And this morning, you've got me thinking like, you know what? I could bring a kite down to the beach here. I'd love to fly one again and even play with a yo-yo, you know, because mm -hmm. it's like riding oh, a bike. Yeah. You never forget, I right? I was good at that, but I was learning. I was going to get him ball and jacks, but I thought, no, nah, that's good. The dog there will eat the jacks, mm -hmm. so that, that won't work. <laughs> I was never coordinated enough for jacks. My sisters could do it good, but I could never catch the ball and scoop up the jacks. Now, now you're asking too much. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I never had this for him. Absolutely. I thought... Now, have you thought of Floyd and his kite perhaps as like an animated short or a uh, small movie or something like that? It's such a simple story. I can't I can't imagine it being put that way. Right. Because it was just... Embellish on it, fill it in with music, <laughs> fill it in with, uh, you know, a little drama here and there. So I think the basics of uh, a boy and his kite could be an interesting story for sure. You know. Yeah, it could be. It could be very interesting. Yeah. Uh, it would be a short one, but yeah. it would be good or an animated one. Yeah. But I I just haven't thought of it. I remember I was never going to ever write a book or or publish anything. I had no idea. But I think God was part of this and that's how it worked. I have other books. I've already started another book. So tell us about your other books. Well, the other book is going to be very different. It's mm -hmm. called Miracles in Everyday Life. It's more of an adult book. 
Mm-hmm. And some of the things like when you're on the road and you're driving and car cuts you off and you almost have an accident, but it doesn't, you manage, you keep saying, oh, wow, I was really lucky. But I think there's more to it than that. I mm. think that we are being watched over by angels or God or however you want to say it, but we are being watched. Yeah. And these things happen. And there, are, the book is full of different people who have had these things happen in their life. And that's what I've been putting together. But well, I think it's a I wonderful don't book because if you think about it, you know, so many circumstances that we're faced with during the course of our day could devolve into something horrible, but for the grace of God. And right. uh, like you said, from getting cut off to crossing the street and somebody's barreling down the road or, you know, a pit bull is... Or you stumble when you're crossing a street and the light's turning. Yeah. I mean, it could be anything. Exactly. Exactly. So you're right. Somebody out there is watching out for us. So I think that's a great uh, book to write as well. How far are you on that book? Uh, I've only got about 50 or 60 pages. Remember, this was never my intention to do this. Right. And God is not pushing. I'm not being pushed. When I'm not being pushed, I'm working on taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. I'm glad oh, you're I utilizing both sides of your brain, your mathematic yeah. side and your artistic side as well. Yeah, that's a that's a surprise to me. I never knew that I would be doing this stuff. Yeah. But now it makes sense so many years later. Wonderful. So. When parents and children read the book Floyd and His Kite, what are you hoping they take away from it as a message? To look at some of the old toys. I mean, I'm not saying to give up all your electronics, but to actually um, really participate with your kids. Mm. Be part of their lives. They are your children. You brought them into this world and you want to share with them the best you can at this point. Yeah, I think it's great advice. And I actually did this with my nieces. I bought them a lot of the classic toys. I bought them a wheelo. Do you know what that is? It's like the little metal track that has a little um, red red uh, wheel on it. And it just goes up and down and back. It's all magnetic. That's one thing. Uh, mm-hmm. The woolly, the woolly face guy that has the magnetic. Uh, oh yes, yes, that you can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard sketch, to find of some of those. Yeah, they're great. They 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 they're awestruck by them because they've never seen them before. It's like I invented <laughs> them, you know. Oh, etch a sketch, the same thing. I mean, hours spent on etch a sketch, you know, is so much more um, positive for a child, I think, than hours spent on a laptop or an iPad. So I think you're doing great work here, Shelba, for sure. Shelba Meek has written a wonderful book. It is an enchanting story. It is called Floyd and His Height. This heartwarming tale rekindles the magic of old time toys and the unique adventures they bring. And she's out soon with another book that we're looking forward to. And it's called what, Shelba? It's called Miracles in Everyday Life. Miracles in Everyday Life. Well, we'd love to have you back on the show when that's ready to go. And I'd love to thank you for being on our show today. Thanks, Melba. Thank uh, Shelba. Thank you. <laughs> that's okay. You can call me Shelly. People okay, can't Okay, Shelly, we'll do. I mixed up your first and last name and it came out as Melba. Okay, there oh, That's go. okay. <laughs> I've been called a lot of things. I've been always called worse, whatever you call me. So that sounds <laughs> good. All right. Shelba, thank you so much. Shelly, thank you so much. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford thanking you your time this time until next time on Spotlight.